So this is We've Been Picked by American Pickers. Oh my I was wearing this. <laughs> I was wearing this with my bags and she had her bags and we both like leave the thrift store like just totally fabulous much. I just thought that the print, this vintage print is super pretty, really fits into the chinoiserie style. Chinoiserie. Uh, the children's cookbook, a beginner's guide to cooking and I opened it up and I was like, oh, the, the first one I saw, it says delicious green beans and I'm like, okay, what does that say? And it says two cans of green beans. <laughs> Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, AKA Lilyworks, and I have a Pemberley here, my four year old. <laughs> okay. Evil lion. And I'm doing the intro here. And um, yeah, so we are going to go check out the antique store today. I'm gonna do a little shopping with my friend Katie, and let's see what this day has in store. <laughs> There you go, ladies so, and gentlemen. The truth is out there. <laughs> but they had this for like your scalp. So they, yeah, for the scalp. This one was supposed to be for the face. That's supposed to be the, for the uh, chin. No, liars. The reason, <laughs> liars. The reason that I'm going to buy it is because they made the same things in Racine. Okay. And I do have the violet gray ones, but I don't have a lot of these extra oh boy. attachments. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm buying it for the attachments. That's what he said. Wow. <laughs> I, don't okay. I was going to say that's a cute little suitcase for $5. Is that fine? Is that fine? And it's a silk leather lined. Cases, yeah. It's yeah, silk it's, lined. It's silk lined and it's leather. Yeah, some of them oh, say, lush. some of them say they seem case company. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's Lois had one. Pig eventually. What? I know. Oh my god. I so what is your name? You're supposed to be coming back to Wisconsin. I, I I'm a local historian. Uh, That's so Wisconsin. cool. And, 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 you know, I'll tell you about that. From the time they started on the program, American Pickers, yeah. I was called every year. <gasps> every year they call me. And then they they say, Oh yeah, you sound real interesting. Uh, well, if we need you, we'll call you back. And they, they never called back. That is so, so cool. So the years cool. went by, you know, and then my daughter said, if they call you, don't even talk. <laughs> you talk them right out. Of it. Yeah. What? So when they came in the area again, they said they're going to be in Wisconsin again. My daughter had her friends start calling in, you know, Jerry from Union Grove. Oh, he's got a great collection of stuff there and all of that. And then when she called in, the producer Oh yeah, we heard about, oh, I can answer your questions that my dad. It took her four months and hundreds of pictures to get them over, but then they came over. Wow, and, and so you must have... Like, they, Mike and Frank were over there about four hours, but the crew was there nine hours the whole day. So what is your best collection? My best collection? Well, I got all kinds of best collections. The most expensive piece I have is a Pressing iron that sold for $45,000. Oh. Another one like it at an auction. So, yeah. And it's unique because, see the hand? Put a handle on it. It's really unique. Oh my God. It's a pig oil. Big pot of pig oil. And, it, it, you know, American Pickers had fun with that. Because I took it off the top shelf and I said, then this is my antique roadshow piece. And it, <laughs> no. Oh yes, exactly. Oh, right, that. exactly. <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> yeah, edit, edit, cut. <laughs> but Mike was having fun with it because we'd be over here, be over there, and then he'd come up and he said, "Would you take twenty thousand for the iron today, Jer?" And it's been around. <laughs> I'm only kidding. We did that a couple times. That's funny. <laughs> okay, you guys, I am so upset. I literally 
went to go edit and realized all of my shop with me at the Goodwill bins at the store with my new friend Katie all got deleted in it somewhere and I'm not even sure. So bear with me, but we did go to the bins. I found some pieces. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, it was like literally one row, only one row of hard goods. If you go to the Goodwill bins, there's usually a lot of hard goods, but my bins over here in Sturdivant, Wisconsin has been be becoming overtaken with clothes. So me and Katie, we weren't all about the clothes, but we did find some things. So uh, yeah, stay tuned to see what we found. And then um, Katie was like, hey, like, is there a Goodwill nearby? And we actually have some really good thrift stores over here. So I was like, jump in the car. Let's go see. Uh, Goodwill was closed, but we went to a um, thrift store called Value Village over here. And I was told by somebody that it was closed and it wasn't. And they had jewelry and I was so excited. So I'm going to sh show the jewelry on the jewelry channel. I'm going to show the hard goods on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed to both and let's get into the haul. All right, you guys, both my camera, this phone camera, this camera, everything died um, at the bins. But I ended up taking, I'm going to show you some of the pieces I did find at the bins and what I'm thinking about doing with them. Um, but I also took Katie, we went driving and I just like drove past some of my favorite spots uh, that I like to go either antique shopping, thrifting, sourcing, that kind of thing. Um, so we ended up noticing that most things closed at five and it was like the bins closed at five so everything seemed like it was closed but I was like why don't we go try to see like drive past value village because I was told that it was closed and that's one place I like to buy jewelry from um one of the thrift stores that actually carries jewelry and also they actually have like a lot of vintage clothing like scarves hats ties I get their suspenders that people haven't picked through their hard goods are not something that's totally awesome but there are things to be found so we got there and we pull up and there's cars all in the parking lot and it said half price everything and we're like yes so we got to spend like 45 minutes in there and got some good deals so i'm going to show you the haul of everything first things first i'm going to show you i did get jewelry and so if you are not subscribed to the Lilyworks reseller channel, I'm going to just be going through these jewelry pieces and explaining them better. Most of these I might be putting on my eBay store and my Shopify store and things like that. But look at these. These are, have intrigued me the most. They're open back with the cupcake crimping, not marked. Makes me think Juliana, makes me think Alice Kavanis, makes me think like all these different top designers with that this like big bold look. So these were a definite yes for $5 half off. You cannot go wrong. We have these Japan French Jet, Vendeme, and then just some really cool interesting clip-ons and some white enamel crown trifari, coro, just a lot of goodness. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to put these in the booth or not. Let me know what you think. I did find, oh, and Katie, she helped me score some of the jewelry pieces. Like she actually asked the lady to take them out for me. And she actually was the one that, find, that found those um, gigantic clip-ons, which was awesome. And she doesn't know anything about jewelry. She's learning. So that was a, an awesome find. We take some tea. We just have some peppermint tea here. So I need to show you how stinking adorable, so adorable. Okay, these right here. The, see they're bunnies and eggs, little resin pieces, or maybe a plastic. These are the button covers, very 1980s. And it looks like we might have a wooden set here. So that might be sold separately. These just make your buttons a little bit more decorative. One, two, three. 
nice for like a sweater look vintage sweater and then we have eggs and we have a bunny so isn't this absolutely over the top ridiculous might put them in the booth um what let me know your thoughts down below like what do you think i should do with the button covers put them online put them in the booth let me know okay so that was that i picked up this piece here um and it's marked mw i think this one was in the half half off section and it reminds me of the jadeite look to it but obviously this is not green this is blue um i really liked this periwinkle color so i did a google lens search and this is blue milk glass katie did think that it was blue milk glass but it is so pretty and this would be perfect for spring and making this look like a sweet little tulip bowl <laughs> for spring like a little vintage milk glass yes i got that one um i actually both Katie and I like stormed out of the antique store and I was wearing, <laughs> hold on, hold on, get ready. I was wearing this. <laughs> I was wearing this with my bags and she had her bags and we both like leave the thrift store like just totally fabulous and um, she like puts her glasses on and I was like this would be like, this should be like the beginning intro of my YouTube videos just this whole scene and so I got this a lot of people wear these these big oversized statement hats to a royal wedding or for Easter so um I'm Easter is coming up I'm gonna put this in the booth yes and then if it doesn't sell in the booth this is actually super well made it is very very thick this is is this called this wrinkly texture right here my mom would know she's a seamstress she would know all about this stuff but super interesting um yeah so I got that piece but the lady at the bins if you guys didn't quite catch what was going on she was very sweet and she was from England the south of England she said somewhere around like between Bath and London and I've been to both so I was like I was just like listening to her accent and wishing I was in England so that just was fabulous so I got to um, she ended up like asking me about the channel and hello if you are here yay and um, I got to tell her some of the favorite spots as far as like thrifting and antique shopping that was nearby so let me get into some of these pieces. So I got this piece at Value Village and it was half off of $2. So I feel like I can't go wrong too much. I just thought that the print, this vintage print is super pretty, really fits into the chinoiserie style. Chinoiserie style has a lot of the birds, flowers, Chinese mixed with vintage and French looking things. So this is actually a plate by Andrea Sadik. So Andrea, Andrea by Sadik, this um, company, brand, maker, I've heard is going way down in value, but I mean, I'm not really buying it because of the name. I just think that it's really pretty. It has the crazing already there to give it like that vintage look. I'm not sure if you guys can see it really well, but it's really, really gorgeous. So I'm going to put it in the booth for sure. Maybe I'll Google lens it to see like, what this actually would go for but I actually really 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 love this this is totally my style to the style of my house so that fits I grabbed this here this is a signed sand art piece I've sold now since I've started hard goods I sold at least three um like is this Navajo let me see. This one says Al Albuquerque, New Mexico. So Pue Pueblo Indians. Okay. So this one's a signed little art piece and it's vintage. It has a little like hanging um, hook thing on the top. And then it will tells you a little bit about the glazed Pue Pueblo pottery on the back. Super cute. I'm going to be putting this in the booth by all the Mexican, Southwestern, Native American stuff over there. And then if it doesn't sell, 
this is like the perfect hard good that I like to sell. It is small and it won't break. It's like, well, at least if I bubble wrap this, this is very easy to ship um, safely. Unlike a long ceramic tile or ornate porcelain, um, um, Capo de Monte. Oh, I, that would be hard. All right, so I'm thinking I'm gonna start putting in some vintage books and I know cookbooks usually draw people in. So I did see this one and I was like, that's kind of cute. Uh, the Children's Cookbook, A Beginner's Guide to Cooking. And I opened it up and I was like, oh, <laughs> the first one I saw, it says delicious green beans. And I'm like, okay, what does that say? And it says two cans of green beans. <laughs> and one can of cream of celery soup. Yum! So I just thought that was so funny. Like, when, when was this made? You can tell, I feel like this is like my husband's like, food, he, my husband's nine years older than me, so he's in his 40s. Um, so I was like, this is totally like, probably what my husband grew up with, because if I make casseroles or anything that's smushy and mushy, he is like in love with me so maybe I need to make him some things from this children's cookbook and it talks about setting the table and things to remember oh things to remember always check with your mother before you start to cook she's had a lot of experience ask her how to show you how to use a stove and small appliances yes that's funny Wash your hands and put it on an apron or an old shirt. Interesting. And then it shows you like what things are. Let's see. Look at the ice cube tray right there. That's we have one of these up north. My mom like we have a cottage and they left all the utensils there from years and years and years ago and she doesn't get rid of them. She just doesn't buy new stuff. So we have that. Yeah, interesting. So that is super cute. Got that one. Okay. Thought this was super pretty to put in for Easter. Not only am I obsessed with eggs, you can see I have like a whole egg thing going on behind me. Um, and I have a lot upstairs. I have like, um, Nippon, no, the Setsuma eggs. This one was only $4.00. There's, I need like to wash off the green stuff, but there is crazing and vintage goodness happening to this big giant ceramic egg. Perfect in like a cute vintage vignette, right? Like this is so sweet. Okay, we put this over here. I grabbed this and you guys might think I'm a little nuts for grabbing this or why did you grab this? But I thought it was really sweet. So this was half of 250. And at first I'm like, what is this? But it's actually a cross stitch E. So if someone's name starts with E, last name starts with E, you can actually see the rash happening from that um, alpaca Mexico nut sterling that we unboxed or unbagged yesterday and I think it's giving me a rash um so I took that off and you know how it's marked 95 sterling it's not um so anyways this is in a vintage frame and it's it's in really good condition for being vintage so sweet and I actually sold at least one piece from my booth that is just a cross stitch piece so really charming and cute this is the kind of thing I do really like to sell. Okay, I did get some scarves because I've already sold a couple scarves from my booth. Let's see. Um, it's funny because when we're at the Goodwill bins, like I think that Katie accidentally finds good stuff. And I heard her saying that, like she's like naturally drawn to high quality stuff. And I believe her because she would be like, oh, this is a Joan Rivers clutch. And I was like, get it. <laughs> Because Joan Rivers, yes, get that. She's like, oh, I don't know. And then she pulls out this new with tags Laurel Birch dress. Laurel Birch, right? We most of us know what Laurel Birch is. And by and I was like, yes, that's good. And so she's like, wait, this is not Tory Birch. I wanted Tory Birch. And I was like, no, Laurel Birch is still good. New with tags, 
Laurel Birch dress. Yes, get that. And she's like, are you sure? I was like, yes. <laughs> get that too. All right. So these I'm going to be putting in the booth because I've already sold a couple scarves. This one's cute for spring vintage hand rolled hem. I don't know. Oh yes, there is a maker on it and I didn't, I didn't look it up, but maybe I'll put stuff on the screen right there. So it says Robinson Cooliver. And if you don't see a tag, you know, on the edges, first look for the tag on the edges. A lot of the times the higher end, more high end um, scarves will be actually printed in the print. So I did grab that one. I actually did find a vintage Oscar de la Renta scarf. But if you guys um, sell like ties or scarves, you know that sometimes it could just take forever to Oscar to to um, sell Oscar de la Renta uh, scarves and ties and things. And I think it's because a lot of the patterns and styles were not timeless. Unlike some others like Hermes, that's kind of like they, a lot of their vintage prints are timeless. Um, Oscar de la Renta's prints, not necessarily. So I guess I'm looking more for like the prints and if it has a name, that's a plus. I'm most definitely looking for silk. This one is a silk right here. And it's like a semi sheer silk. And it does have a name right there in the bottom. Again, another name I haven't sold. This one says Elaine Gold. But look at the colors. So nice. Very silky hand rolled hem. So I got that one. We have this one which is totally screaming. Easter right here. Isn't that lovely? It's like a soft yellow. This one's going in the booth. Half of 380. I also think that this one is silk. There's no name or anything, but nice vintage scarf. We have this one, which is Echo. This is a very common vintage scarf brand, vintage belt brand. Um, and I, I've sold a lot of Echo scarves and I haven't sold any in a booth so I'm going to try it and I think this one would go really well as well with the tulips and spring coming up. Right. So now I'm going to get into some of the Goodwill bins stuff and if you guys haven't been to the Goodwill bins they sell things by the pound unless it's like books. I think it's per book. I think maybe a dollar per book. But I wanted to find people because it was so scarce. It was so terrible. <laughs> the bins, I don't know. It's not tempting anymore. Let, let me just put it that way. Um, unless you're a clothing reseller, maybe. But I was looking for wood because I'm very inspired by like the whole upcycling situation. This piece I actually think would be really like even cool as a display piece in the booth. Giant. And it has drawers giant vintage piece this would be so good for like displaying so I'm thinking of like even maybe doing like a distressed milk paint maybe decoupage the sides oh I'm just like I could totally make this so beautiful and maybe I can even make it moody so maybe not like a light pink but maybe like a dark green moody situation with like brass and you know you know what I like so um, this that would be super cool because a lot of people who repurpose I think don't go like the moody dark jewel tone look um, where I do like my living room and stuff is like dark navy blue and gr dark green um, so that might be really interesting and I think it looks really great with gold tone frames and brass and plants and yay so let me tell you, um, because this was 13 pounds, I was not wanting to pay, you know, the whatever per pound. I don't even know, like, maybe I'll put it on the screen if I know the weight or how much it was per pound. But at Goodwill, this was $9.99. It has the tag still on it. So I asked if they could do a, like, give me a one pr a, a base price or whatever. Just like a one price type of a thing without the weight. And they said if it's over 10 pounds, so they weighed it. And um, he was like, $5.99. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not going to pay $5.99 for this piece um, that everyone else is passing over. 
and especially like if this was $9.99 this already had gone half off at Goodwill for $4.99 and they said the best that they can do is half off the regular Goodwill sticker price and I was like that is so silly to me considering that it's already been half off at Goodwill and now it's at the bins where it's like it's last uh, chance to be saved but here I am saving it um, so there's that piece okay you guys already saw Pooh Bear so stinking adorable if if I find something that where I'm like so stinking adorable then I'm like mm, maybe I should get it because <laughs> I'm sure other people you guys saw the belts let me show you this coat that I really want to rescue. So real fur, we know, like people, we don't want to buy real fur now to like, you know. But I do really believe in rescuing pieces that have already been made, that have a history, that are vintage. And this is one of those pieces that are silk lined. You can see silk lining, it's coming away at the top. But this is something I really want to put in my booth. Um, is this what kind of fur is this? Mm, I don't know. Fox fur? <laughs> I'm not sure. But I'm thinking it's a woman's coat. So besides the the silk lining coming undone a little bit, there I if there's like not balding or anything, it doesn't have weird smells. So I wanted to rescue this piece. We have we have this tray here, this giant tray, and I'm like thinking in my mind, oh my fruit vignettes, like I totally have sections that are themed in my booth, booth and I, my brain kind of, it's probably how my brain works in those sections. So um, this one is the, the DAR, is that how you say it, D-A-H-A, I'm sorry, D-A-H-E-R. Um, and we see these often as far as trays go and this is made in England um, so I did get this it's very lightweight another find that I was pretty excited about that I do want to repurpose and um, are these really solid it says winsome wood made in Thailand these are some solid letter or paper holder trays and it actually stacks on top of each other. So wouldn't these be great to repurpose? So we got that. Um, um, Katie found this for me. This is a wooden, uh, what is it? it said, oh, this is from Restoration Hardware. That is a good brand. So this was classic wine plates in here. So I'm gonna take off the sticker. This actually looks like one of those cheese wheel boxes. But this actually held plates in here. I'm gonna take off all the stickers and we're gonna make it look super cute. And then look at this book. One thing I'm learning from Maya and from Sonnet, from Sonnet's Garden Blooms is like, crusty rusty is a good thing. So now I'm like starting to think along those lines as far as an antique booth goes because people really do like the juxtaposition of really clean lines of like milk glass and things that are clean and polished with the juxtaposition of old and crusty rusty, right? So I'm like trying to think of that a little bit more. Um, so found this book and it looks sad, but this book says, hello, I'm Adeline. Um, by Erica Weiss, W-E-I-H-S, and it is just vintage goodness. The pages are just ridiculous. Honestly, I feel like the pages themselves could be like framed, and there's little songs in here, Storm When I Hear You, but I can see this as in being a part of a vintage vignette, so grab that one, and then I grabbed other type thing so oh I thought this was super cute host Betty Crocker hostess cookbook so we know that some cookbooks vintage cookbooks can go for some good money so I'm like hmm again with the vintage recipes I mean this just brings you back to a time not when I was alive but I am imagining <laughs> I'm imagining 
Like this is just so fun. Potato balls. We have Sunday waffles, celery French dressing, Sunday bubble crown. Look at this. So fun. Okay. This one says The Wonder House, and I thought this one would be like perfect for stacking with other books, which I can show you. Maybe putting a ribbon around it and having it more as like display book. Oh, this actually has really good um, pictures in it. Look. Like really cute vintage -y pictures. So that's kind of cute. Um, okay, so this, let me know what you guys think, what is, this is. When I first saw this, my first thought is that it's one of those where you roll die in it and it and it stays in here. But let me know what you guys think. I'm not exactly sure. It's felted on the bottom with like vintage felt. It's something. So I thought I would ask you guys. I was curious. We have this wood shelf. Maybe put some like deco all on it and make it all cutesy and this is like really high quality wood so yes um, for pieces like that that are on that are on their way to the dump like ready to be thrown out I am not afraid of taking chances and making mistakes on whatever craft or upcycle I'm doing we got these spring flowers and then Katie found this for me. Someone built it as like a planter. Um, you can tell someone painted and built this, but I'm totally wanting to uh, redo this and make it a little bit cuter and actually put some like top coat on it. So maybe milk, milk paint with top coat um, in it. All right, and then we have more vintage books that would be super cute for stacking. So let's see what I can show you here. So we have um, Hans Brinker, that one. This one says Heidi right there. That would be super cute. Then we have, um, what does this say? Eight Cousins by Louisa May Scott. Just really pretty. Then we have The Little Women <clears throat> right there. So maybe like bundling some of these kind of books together and then these are all the same as well and I actually took the cover off of one of them, realized it was the same type of book and it looks better um, with the cover off because it looks more vintage and the covers themselves are fantastic. Look at that. Like I don't even know. What does it say? Re Reader's Digest Condensed Books. So. I don't know but I thought that these are just really really pretty so sometimes you can think of books as like de decor pieces versus you know actual like you want to sell them to read so that was what I had as far as um, all the pieces I got today I actually spent less at the thrift store than I did at the bins I think it was 46 at the bins 42 at the thrift store so not too bad of a day um, and it was super fun shopping with Katie. It's so nice to be able to like collaborate and talk about things with other people who are knowledgeable um, in like vintage and collectibles. That was really fun. And also I wanted to post like a little clip. What was his name again? But he, oh my gosh, I was so, so like tickled by this gentleman who came into the antique store today and he like he plopped this suitcase looking thing on the counter as I'm like over in the corner a little bit tagging things and he says is this five dollars and Maya's like yep that's five dollars and I was like that's pretty cheap for a leather suitcase because usually Maya likes it price a little bit higher so I was like oh and then he opens it up and there's actual things in there and he says do you know what this is and she's like oh yeah and he like seemed like he like she didn't know what it was and he was like this is for a woman's like and like he like said the um like pleasure like he was like it's for a woman's pleasure and she's like what I was told it's for like 
face massages or something and I was like dying because then um his like girlfriend comes over or whatever and like they're both in their 70s and she's like oh Lois had one of those and we're like Lois we're just dying um so it turns out he gave us his card as you guys might have seen and he has a huge 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 collection um, such a big big collection that American Pickers came out and did like a whole um, segment with him and picked at his place and um, so he knows what to look for and he has collections of stuff so Maya Sue and I and I'm gonna drag Katie along I'm like we we need to just go on like a field trip <laughs> we're gonna field trip over to his house he said his daughter might have things for sale for us which would be super fun and I think that would be a really fun video and just a really fun field trip what do you guys think about that I'm like looking here oh you know sometimes you find money in books I'm like what is that it's the receipt <laughs> I see sometimes people at the bins like shaking books to see if there's anything in them. Um, so it turns out that he is an author. I'm going to put a clip in. He actually like wrote this book and it has a really lovely pictures in it. I'm not sure who the man is. Maybe you guys know, but it was actually really interesting. So this whole guy's life and story and collection was totally interesting, really fun, like hearing about things from him. And I actually ended up being at the antique booth. Like if I own an antique store, I would never stop talking to you guys. I, every single customer that was there, like I was just like, I need to talk about all the things, everything that they had, all the collections that they have. So yeah, I'm. <laughs> it was great. I loved it. So yeah. Um, do I have anything else I wanted to say? I don't think so. Anyways, I'm gonna sign off here. I'm done talking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. I'm gonna grow this channel quickly. Um so that it can catch up to the other channel hopefully soon but yeah make sure to like this video leave me a comment down below share this channel if you think that other people would enjoy it I feel like there's a lot of people that would enjoy like shop with me's and things about collecting and vintage so go ahead and share them with your friends your antique booth buddies whatever and we'll try growing this channel but yeah I will see you guys in my next video make sure you're out there thrifting so you guys can live generously bye guys a huge shout out to all the Patreon members for supporting both YouTube channels and our Lilyworks Facebook community. Come on over to our new selling platform called district.net. We have two stores. One is called Lilyworks Antiques and Collectibles. The other is Lilyworks Jewels and Lots. Become a member. You can also become a seller. Also, if you're interested in anything you see from this video or reseller merch, go ahead and head over to lilyworksreseller.com where you can find different collections for sale. Also, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later.